Hey guys, we have this iPhone 6s Plus here today that uh, has no touch functions. With the device boot up here, I'll show you. We have zero touch functionality on this iPhone 6s Plus. Front end technicians have already tried new screens, etc. So it's got pass back here for board level repair. Once we ruled out, once they ruled out any kind of park issues. to the overhead cam so as you can see zero touch functions on this iPhone 6s plus we disconnected the battery we're removing the screen and the first thing we we're going to do here before we even take the board out of the housing is check the J4200 FPC connector, which handles else, uh, display and touch. I'm going to check it in diode mode. Switch to the microscope view here. Our multimeter. You can see it um, over here in diode mode. I'm going to go quickly check ZXW. So here's the connector. These are backlight pins, so we have touch starting here at pin 12. We have another one on 18. I2C line. So we'll start testing in here. So red probe on ground, black probe testing each pin on the connector here. So one, two, three, four. So we're going to start at pin 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. A good diode reading there. We're good here. And we have ground. Then we should have 0.472. Close enough. Good. And we have a. Uh, should be an open line. This is normal. So right here we should be getting 0.4. We're getting open line. So, double check that. Yeah, so we're getting open line on pin 22. So SPI, AP to touch, SKL, SELK connection. So pin 22 runs through this filter. Okay, so we're getting open line here. The first thing we're going to check is this filter, FL4251. So if there's something wrong with the filter, then that would make sense why we get open line, because there's nowhere for the line to go. Okay. It's going to be under here. Looks like we found our issue, so that filter is completely disconnected from the board. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and reconnect that filter. And that will probably solve our touch issue. This kind of thing usually happens uh, when a technician 
and they do a screen repair and they'll knock a component. In this case they knocked, looks like they knocked an important filter required for touch function. Get it off of the. Okay. We're going to apply a small amount of flux here. We're going to retin these pads. So now using hot air, we're just going to float in that uh, the filter. Increase my airflow slightly. So we mounted the filter on the reverse side that it was originally mounted because of the damage um, so that it doesn't look nice on the top box on that side because that's where it was damaged and it was pulled off but the other side's fine so the filter should be good and we're going to test um, diode mode on that, uh, on that pin now. Okay. 
count 11 down. So now we're getting the accurate reading in dial mode, which is good. back to the overhead cam view. Prompt the device to boot and we're run, going to test to see if touch functions have been restored. If they haven't, we will continue testing in dial mode along the J4200 connector to see if we find any more abnormal readings. Alright, so touch functions have been restored. So this device is fixed. Um, as a recap, this device came into our front end technicians with no touch functions whatsoever. Um, I haven't checked the notes to see if it had been at a previous shop, but it looks like it was technician damage. Usually when they try to install a screen, a component can get knocked. In this case, it was a filter connected to pin 22 on J4200, uh, which caused an open line reading on that pin. And um, simply uh, reinstalling the filter uh, has solved the issue. So this phone, uh, we can get it assembled and back to the customer. Thanks for watching.